Hello, I am um, publishing a bit of an unusual video, or at least a video that's uh, atypical for my channel. This video is actually going to be in response to a contemporary news event. Uh, if you have not heard, today a major blast went, went on, uh, or happened within the uh, port of the uh, city of Beirut in Lebanon. And uh, there, it was quite a large explosion, and uh, there were many thousands injured, and as of my most recent reading, I've seen 75 approximately fatalities, but doubtlessly that will go higher. And uh, what I want to do in this video is just a short discussion. Um, I have seen a lot of posts on social media, people uh, speculating and making really, uh, honestly, uh, unhelpful speculations about uh, basically based on visual uh, observations, ill-informed opinion, unscientific opinion about this particular event. Uh, some speculating that some that it's some sort of nuclear device, uh, that sort of thing. And I just want to do a brief uh, discussion and reality check on that, so that although uh, this is obviously a serious event and our thoughts and prayers to the people of um, Beirut and the people of Lebanon, um, this thankfully was a conventional event rather than a, a much more serious uh, atomic event, which would be uh, much, much more serious, obviously. Now, um, as it should be hopefully obvious, but uh, perhaps not, I'll give this warning, this video will contain footage um, of the blast as recorded from various viewpoints and uh, well, along with associated commentary. But uh, again, if you are sensitive to this sort of thing, I suggest maybe uh, looking at a different video or going to a different page uh, just for just some viewer discretion advice. This will feature a video of a very large explosion in a major city. So I think this type of video here, this is an example of one of the many videos out on social media uh, from uh, the blast. And I think this video in particular and others like it uh, explain uh, why some people have jumped to the conclusion that this was some sort of atomic or nuclear device. Um, and it's largely because of the, uh, well, clear mushroom cloud visible uh, here. And another example of it here. Seeing these videos, it's easy to see why some people would jump to the conclusion that this is some sort of uh, nuclear device. Uh, as we always see in popular media, uh, mushroom clouds associated with uh, atomic devices. And while nuclear devices will, of course, produce mushroom clouds, there are, uh, well, mushroom clouds are not dependent on, um, on uh, nuclear reactions. They're simply a result of uh, some sort of quick, uh, some sort of quick increase of heat in a localized area, and that can be via a, a conventional or nuclear device. As long as it's of sufficient magnitude and the uh, atmospheric conditions are appropriate, it will generate a mushroom cloud. The whole the basic idea of a mushroom cloud is you get this sphere of superheated gas in the center. It then rises up, uh, and uh, because it's less uh, buoyant, because it's more buoyant than the air around it, it rises up in a circular column. And then, um, and then once it reaches a certain height where the air is less dense, it expands outward, and that's what creates the characteristic mushroom cloud shape. Okay, so the scale of the blast, as recorded by the uh, Jordanian Earthquake Observatory, was uh, 4.5 on the Richter scale, a magnitude 4.5 on the Richter scale. Now, uh, running through the calculation, the uh, formula for energy content versus uh, Richter scale, well, it's a log of E equals 4.8 plus 1.5 times M, and then take that traverse that you take it to the 10 power, and you can calculate the, uh, the energy released by a uh, earthquake uh, using this formula here. And so we know that the uh, Richter formula, the Richter scale uh, value for the blast was 4.5, and that comes to approximately 3.6 times 10 to the 11 joules. And then uh, converting this to TNT uh, tons equivalent or tons TNT equivalent, we find that, uh, well, first I would, in this calculation, what I need to do is I want to define uh, what a ton of TNT equivalent is and a commonly or a uh, value that I found by reference was 4.2 times 10 to the 9 joules. And then running a simple conversion, we can calculate that the energy of the blast was equivalent to four, uh, it was equivalent to 84.9 uh, tons of TNT, which is 
reasonable for a kind of um, arms or uh, or explosives or some sort of uh, storage accident or whatever it may be. What this most reminds me of is the Halifax explosion in uh, that was 1917 during World War One. Uh, that blast was equivalent to 2,900 tons of TNT and uh, produced a similar kind of mushroom cloud appearance. So uh, yeah, this kind of thing can be generated by conventional explosives and uh, the values quoted are, are seem pretty realistic. And uh, the amount of calculated material, 84 tons, that seems reasonable for what could be kept in a a warehouse or a bunker or a ship or whatever it may be. We don't really know yet, but uh, it doesn't it does it does appear to be a conventional explosive. For reference, this is a conventional uh, munitions weapons test. This is of the uh, Moab, which is a uh, airdropped explosive that was, uh, I believe at the time, the largest uh, conventional uh, weapon yielded by any armed forces, but this was back during the 2000s, the mid 2000s. And we can see the initial formation of the explosion and of course, eventually the characteristic uh, mushroom cloud. And uh, the, if you notice here, the same previous to here, the same uh, characteristic shockwave was observed. So this is an example of a conventional explosive, which, which produces uh, very similar characteristics to the blast observed in Beirut. And it is uh, interesting to note that this would, this particular uh, device would have had a uh, much higher yield than what I uh, calculated uh, uh, previously. So my thoughts go out to the people of Lebanon and Beirut in particular. Um, I know we have a lot of viewers from uh, that part of the world and we have viewers from all over the world, but uh, thoughts and prayers with all of you. So uh, I just wanted to create this video as a uh, short sort of debunking or a short uh, explanation for uh, sort of the magnitude and a feel for what this might actually look like in terms of physical material, uh, just kind of debunking some conspiracy and fear mongering uh, related to this event. So based on the yield reported, uh, the 4.5 mag uh, Richter magnitude equivalent, uh, this is firmly within the range of conventional explosives. And keep in mind the 4.5 value is a, um, is a conservative value in the sense that I have read uh, reports from different seismic agencies, some saying 3.3, some saying 3.5. The highest value I got, which was from the Jordanian Earthquake Observatory, was 4.5. So on the upper end, this is equivalent to approximately 85 tons of TNT, which is well within the, re uh, the realm of conventional explosives. Okay. All right. Uh, again, thoughts and prayers with those affected. Uh, I will see you all again soon, but I just wanted to provide this as a bit of educational opportunity and uh, just show as an example for how we can use uh, engineering skills and a little bit of science and mathematical knowledge, even in day-to-day uh, -day, uh, uh, news reactions and responses and, and judging news events and that sort of thing. All right. I hope to see you all again soon. And as always, thank you.